So the lady that was talking uh, just a second ago, the, her name is Jackie Kelly. She is the assistant director of financial aid. The other lady somewhere led working the door. Our door woman um, is Annette Morgan. She is the director of financial aid. Of course, my name is Will Massey. I'm a retention counselor uh, for financial aid here in Kilgore. To my left, also sitting over there, is Liz Chambliss. Uh, she is the financial aid counselor there in Longview. So if you ever need anything in, at the Longview campus or Kilgore College Longview, then you would need to go see uh, Liz as well. Once again, please put your cell phones up. We don't really want to be mean. That's not really who I am. I, I try to be nice and, and funny quite a bit. So everybody is excited to be here, right? Yes. Yes. Y'all are liars. <laughs> the truth is not in y'all. <laughs> y'all the ones that Google your answers on e-learning, okay? Nobody really wants to hear. Everybody got the email. Here's the, here's what happened. Uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, a year ago, we, Kilgore College, stepped into something called our default rate. And what that means is that people that were paying their student loans weren't really paying their student loans. The percentage went up to 30%. The Department of Education came in and said, hey, we need to do something about it. So uh, Ms. Morgan, along with Ms. Kelly and some others, put together this plan and submitted it to the Department of Education. That plan was accepted by the Department of Education. And now, guess what? Here we are in these wonderful 30 to 40 minute sessions. So that's why we're here. We want to uh, make sure that you have a good time. I want you to respond to me. I'm going to ask several questions. I want you to make sure you respond because the more times I have to ask the questions, the longer we're here. So we don't want to, we definitely don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to start my clock. Like I said, my name is Will Massey. Monday, who enjoyed being off Monday? Anyone? I, God, I loved it. I'm going to tell you, after the horrible week we had in financial aid before and all the stress, I absolutely love being off. Well, I'm a man's man. I'm like a, the great American redneck, right? I'm, I'm going to show whoever, what I'm a man. I don't have to ask anybody else to do anything. So my battery cable on my truck broke. And so I was like, Monday, I'm going to fix it. I'm just going to show my wife and my boys here. I know what I'm doing. So I went outside to get my tools, and, and there was no tools to be found. I have a 15, 13, 11-year-old boy. So obviously, they decided to dig in the dirt with them instead of <laughs> letting me use them. They weren't there. So I decided I'm going to give me a razor blade. And so I grabbed this razor blade and I'm like, I can fix this with a razor blade. I'm a man's man. I can do it. I'm not asking anybody for it. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But I did it anyway. And I go to hacking away and about eight cuts later, blood pouring all over my left hand, I decided I, I got to do something different. My little boy, my youngest, my 11 year old, he said, Daddy, I'm going to bring you a knife. I was like, it's a razor blade. What's, he brought me, have you ever seen the knives? That the, at Walmart or Sam's or on TV where they cut the wood and then they slice the tomato and then they cut the metal and then they slice the tomato. He brought me one. It's about this long, right? And it's a bread knife. And so finally I just said, forget it. I just started hacking away. And I'm going to tell you, it really does cut metal because I was able to cut it off. I said all that to say it would have been a lot easier if I would have had the right tools to be able to fix that battery cable, right? I mean, if I would had the right things then that would have been, I don't want to get emails while I'm here, sorry. That would have been the easiest thing to be able to, to use. I didn't have the right tools. Nor did I have anybody there that could tell me where, what right tools to use. Because I had no clue what I was doing. I just want to fix it. A lot of us start college that way. A lot of us just kind of go because either our parents made us go or we feel like it's better for ourselves or whatever. And we just kind of start college and we don't really know the right tools. We really don't know the ways to do things or have all the right people in, in place. Today, we want to try to give you some of those tools. We want to try to give you a tool to be successful, not only academically, but also financially when you get out of here. So, I know you're not going to believe this, but there are students that sign up for class that never show up. So what? I know it's amazing, right? If I signed up for class and paid the money, I'm thinking I'm going to class. But rich. there's nobody, I mean, there are some students out there that do not go to class. So the first thing we want to talk about is our non-attendance policy. Now, that sounds weird that we have to talk about it, 
But if you don't, if you are registered for classes and you don't attend any of your classes, if, if the teachers report you on the 12th class day saying, that man's never been in class at all, your aid is going to be backed off of your account. On top of that, you're going to be dropped from those classes by the registrar's office, and then the cashier's office is going to place a hold on your account for any money that you owe, bookstore, meal plan, housing, whatever it is. You've dropped out of classes, your aid's backed out, you're going to owe that money. That doesn't seem like a whole lot of big deal, but if you go to transfer to another school, you can't get that transcript because you still owe that money. So you want to make sure that you are attending classes. So what does that really mean? Oh, and if you, if you are loan only eligible, that means you didn't get scholarship, you didn't get any kind of bail grants. If you're loan only, you've got to be enrolled and attending six hours for you to be able to get those loans. So if you drop and don't go to those classes and you drop down to three hours, you're not going to get any type of loan. So you want to be careful about that. Um, physical classes, meaning classes that actually have a teacher that you go into. I would suggest not missing a class. I would suggest going into that class because I think that you're allowed four absences for a two-day class and I think something like that or six absences for a three-day class, whatever it is for each syllabus, um, each class. But my suggestion, if it's a physical class you go into, that you actually take and you sit your tail in the seat. Now, I had a guy call me and said, hey, Will, why'd you back my aid out? I walked in and said, hey, to the teacher. I'm just saying that doesn't really count as attendance. I mean, I see teachers walking up and down the hall all the time. I, I'm not attending their classes. So you actually have to sit through a class to be counted as being there. Now, if you're in web classes, I took a lot of web classes um, when I was here at Kilgore College. I take a lot of web classes now. How do you get, does anybody know how you get counted as being attending of a, of a web class? In the back. You have to log on to the website. Ah, wrong. See, that's what a lot of people think. Not trying to call you out. Logging on just does not count in as being attending that class. There are four things, one of four things you have to do to attend a web class here at Kilgore College. You have to either submit an assignment, submit a quiz or a test, post to a discussion board, or have back and forth communication with the teacher because of some type of technical issue. Those are the only four ways that you can be counted as attending a web class. So if you're like myself and you want to wait for the last minute, you might want to hurry up and get in there and, and complete, post to a discussion board, talk to your instructor, do a quiz, complete an assignment, or you'll be counted as not attending and your aid will be backed off for <coughs> that class that you, you weren't in. Now, once you have gotten the attendance part down, Kilgore College has something else called SAP policy. Everybody say SAP. SAP. Let's try it one more time. Everybody say SAP. SAP. SAP policy. It stands for Satisfactory Academic Progress Policy. And it's been around for quite a few years. What that means to you as a student is that we use the semester GPA. Not your cumulative GPA, but your semester GPA. And it has to be at least a 2.0 each semester. So, and there's, a, there's another requirement. Not just your, your semester GPA has to be a 2.0, but there's a certain amount of hours that you have to pass each semester with that 2.0. How many students are 12 and above hours right now? Now, nursing, y'all like go to school like 35 hours a week and only get credit for one or something like that. But um, for those that are 12 and above hours, class hours, you have to complete nine of those hours with a 2.0. If you don't, you're going to go on financial aid warning. How many people are three quarter time, which means nine hours of class? Anybody have just nine hours? All right. That means you have to complete six hours with at least a 2.0. Anybody with just half time, six hours and below? You have to complete all of your classes, basically what it boils down to. If you don't pass with a 2.0, the hours that I just told you, a majority of your classes, there is a little thing that we call warning. A little small bump in the road. A little pothole, a little, little hitch in the giddy up, a little problem, right? And what, what that means is that you either didn't have a 2.0 or you didn't pass enough hours. Guess what happens when you get on warning? You get to come see me. 
And I'm just a happy, fat, jovial person until I ask you to do two things. So, yeah, that doesn't go over real well with a lot of people. But we're trying to get you to a point, we're trying to not get you to the next level, which is financial aid suspension. When I, I was 17 when I graduated high school, 18 when I started college. I went to a little school in, in Mississippi called Delta State University. It was really good at nursing, avionics, and teaching. That is not at all why I picked that school. I picked that school because there was eight girls to every one guy. <laughs> and being an ugly, fat, white guy, you have to increase your odds any way that you can. That is the only way the reason I picked that school. It wasn't because of the academics, it wasn't because of the college. It, it was eight girls to every one guy. I just like my chances. So I get there and they do similar to the way Kilgore does, right? Every teacher the first day really don't want to be there, so they're going to go over their syllabus and just kind of, we're going to get out of class pretty quick. Well, they went over their syllabus and their attendance policy was this. It said, for every hour class that this is, you can miss four times. Now, I'm not real smart, but I, I said, well, we're in English, and I said, you're telling me that I can miss 12 times? And y'all won't tell my mama. They said, Mr. Massey, you're an adult now. You can miss as many as you'd like to. <laughs> that first month, I'm telling you, I don't even remember what I did. I was in a little state that I can't talk about up here. But I don't remember a whole lot about that first month. But I didn't go to class. At all. I finished with a 1.23 GPA. I think I passed racquetball or something like that. <laughs> the next semester they let me come back and give me 12 more hours and I was still in the dorm. Maybe I had an apartment at that time, I can't remember. And I, I went back to class, they said the same thing, 0.89 GPA that semester. Woo, son, great. Went back the third time because they liked my mama's money so much that uh, yeah, so I only, when I transferred into Kilgore College, I transferred three credits, and yeah, it was racquetball, bowling, and psychology. Um, I finished there at Delta State with a point six nine GPA. Come on now, I worked hard. Hey, give me a round of applause for a point six nine. I worked hard for that point six nine. Some of y'all know how hard it is to get to that point six nine. You've been there. Just saying. I did come back to Kilgore, though. And I did finish with a 4.0. I did graduate with uh, the highest honors or whatever that means. I am Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, so I, I enjoy school now. But then, if someone would have stopped me after that first semester and they would have placed me on warning and said, Hey, Will, you know, the 12 class periods that you can, that you can miss is not really uh, what you should do. It's more of a suggestion what they're allowing you to do. If someone would give me some tools, then maybe I wouldn't have had to wait 20 years to go back to school. Maybe I could have finished my degree then and started into a career then as opposed to still being in school at the present moment. It also cost me about $20,000. When I graduated Kilgore College, I got a diploma, but I also got about $18,000 in student loan debt. Oh, don't say, ooh, I've seen a lot worse. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But if someone would have been there to say something to me, then quite possibly I would have gone into that. So what happens after, so what's the GPA got to be? Semester GPA? Wow. And you got to pass the majority of your classes? The first semester warning, right? Little pothole, little hitch in the giddy up. If you get the second semester and you don't have a, a 2.0, you don't go into a pothole, you go into the Grand Canyon. You're not coming out. The only way to get off a of suspension, financial aid suspension, is to pay for 12 hours out of your own pocket and pass with a 2.0. That's it, that's the only way to do it. There's no other way to, to, to get off a of suspension besides that. That's if you have below a 2.0 for the second semester in a row. Now, there's another way to go on to suspension. That other way to go on suspension is if you completely withdraw from classes. Or you do similar to what I did and fail all of your classes. Or if you have a combination of the both of them, then you are going straight to financial aid suspension. So if you withdraw from all your classes or if you, anyone, you fail all your classes or a combination of the two, then you will go straight to financial aid suspension. Once again, 
you have to pay for 12 hours out of your own pocket. That does not mean we're going to transfer to another school and get financial aid to pay for 12 hours there and then come back. You have to pay for 12 hours out of your own pocket maintaining the 2.0 before financial aid will be reinstated. Now you're saying, Will, I know I'm a 4.0 student. Things happen. Um, my first semester in school, I, I, you know, being a big fat healthy man that I am, I, I caught pneumonia, right? And so I went into the hospital for a week and it was double lung pneumonia with something called pleurisy. I would, you know, fat people like to breathe. We can't breathe anyway, but we like our air capacity to be there. So I was in the hospital for a week. Thankfully, I had great teachers like Ms. Caldwell, um, like Paige Wood, like James Johnson that were able to work with me and allow me to get my, my stuff turned in. I didn't have to drop fats. But what would happen if you were in a car wreck or any of those things? You still go straight to suspension if you fully withdraw from all of your classes. So I want to make sure that we all understand that. So you go from warning to suspension. suspension. All right. To try to keep you from getting to that point, there's something that we have asked or the student success team has asked for the instructors to do. It's called red alerts. Anybody ever gotten a red alert email from me? Don't be embarrassed. Nope. Raise them up high. Be proud. I'm with you. If you get a red alert notice, what that means is that the instructor really cares about you. Oh. The instructor is trying to say, hey, there's a problem. I don't know if they're not going to class. I don't know if they're not attending. I, the grades, the work, the behavior, whatever it is. They're saying there's a problem with this person and we will need to get them some help. So once again, we go back to the right tools, right? We want to make sure. So you get a red alert notice in for me. I put a hold on your account. You have to come talk to me or to Liz. Um, the reason being is because we want to make sure that you don't get to suspension. How many people in here have can afford to pay for school just straight out of pocket without any financial aid? I can't. I'm in Texas A&M Commerce and I was begging for some scholarships and grants and everything else just about a month ago because I, I couldn't afford it if I didn't have financial aid. We don't want you to get to that point. We in financial aid want you to be successful here at Kilgore College. We are committed to you being successful, not only academically, but when you leave here financially as well. So those red alerts are important. You're not going to be able to get your transcript. You're not going to be able to add or drop classes or any of those things until you come to, well, add classes. You can still drop them. Until you come see me and I'll remove that red alert hole. Once again, I'm not trying to be the grand pooba over Kilgore College. I'm not trying to be the ruler of your life. I am just simply trying to find out if there's anything that we in financial aid or anybody else at Kilgore College can do to help make you successful, plain and simple. So let's talk about what success is. Uh, I'm going to ask Miss Annette Morgan to come up to the board and uh, we're going to do something real quick. She's going to write, well it's not going to be real quick. I'm going to need your responses though uh, to this. How many people know what the average salary for Kilgore, for Kilgore is? The average salary, just throw some numbers out there. 28? Any more? 50. 50? 30? It's actually 42,500. 42,500. That's actually <clears throat> what they say the average income for Kilgore, Texas is. 42,500. Can I just say I've talked to my bosses about trying to make me more average? Because I'm way under average right now. She's not budging on that, so maybe y'all can talk to her a little later uh, if I shorten this up some. So at 42,500, your deductions are, are anywhere from 20 to 25 percent. So we're going to use the low end. It's going to be about $8,500. That's going to leave you with $34,000 to live on for the year, right? How many months are in a year? 12 months in a year. So you take 34,000 divided by 12, you're at $2,835 per month cash money coming into your household. Now look, I live in Longview, in Spring Hill. My little boys, I got three band nerds, a 15, 13, 11 year old. I'm gonna round this up to 40, make it easier. 2840. Okay, sounds good to me. Is that going to is that mess Yes, ma'am, but that's okay. You're the boss. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll do 35. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you know, we can do whatever you want to. <laughs> All right, I've got you. Uh, 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 I still like my job, so uh, we're going to do what she says, too. No, I'm just joking. All right, so here's the deal. I, I pay in, in Long Beach, Spring Hill, I pay $1,100 a month in rent. What's the average rent or house payment? Average rent. Anybody? Uh, About eight hundred. Uh, Fifteen, twelve. Let, let's go. Let's go. Eight, let's say the low end. We, that's the lowest one I heard was eight hundred. Let's go with the eight hundred. So if you subtract eight hundred from that, you're at two thousand thirty-five dollars left, right? So we've got the house. We, we've got a job making forty-two five. We've got the house, right? We've paid Uncle Sam. Obama and our senators are going to get their paychecks. We paid our taxes and stuff. We've got the house, but what do we have to have for the house? You gotta have some electricity, right? You gotta have power to the house. How much is electricity gonna run us? Now look, my little boys think it's their duty to to illuminate all of Longview, Texas. Basically, every house, every light in the house on. So what do you think? Give me a number. About two hundred. Let's let's do two hundred. Let's stay with two hundred. That's the low end, right? I would think. Two hundred dollars. It's gonna drop you down to eighteen thirty-five. Does anybody like to take a bath? God Almighty, it's close as y'all are sitting. I hope every one of y'all did. So gas. I mean, for water, sewage, and trash. My bill alone is about seventy-five dollars a month. That's kind of what I use. So those three. So if you use seventy-five dollars, you're down to seventeen sixty. So now we've got our forty-two thousand five hundred great average paycheck. We paid Uncle Sam and our senators. To, to, we got a house. We got electricity. We got water. And we're going to say that house is all electric, no gas in it. That would be another bill. So now we've got to have a way to get to work, right? A twenty thousand dollar car. Who would like to drive a twenty thousand dollar car? Hey, let me tell you, you're right? So the other day, I drive it. I drive. I don't know if y'all seen it, but it's a Ford F-150. It's silver. It's got the roll-up windows in it. You know what I'm talking about? It's, and it's beat up, and, and it's thin on top, and it's horrible. But it's paid for. And so I was the other, my son was like, hey, daddy, let's go get us a new Dodge Ram. I was like, man, you know what? I had a job at Kilworth and to graduate. Cam, you see? Let's go. I, I owe it to myself. I walked on. Ooh, $43,000 for the cheapest one. I said, son, we're going to keep driving the truck. <laughs> the truck. I, so $20,000, your payment for 36 months is about four twenty-five dollars a month. That's going to drop you down to thirteen thirty-five. So remember, forty-two five. dollars we've dropped down, paid our taxes, we've got a house, electricity, and water. Now we've got a car. Unless you want that car to be just a lawn ornament, there's something else you're going to need for it. Insurance and gas, right? So let's look at the gas first. Or the insurance first. How much is the insurance? A lot. How much y'all pay in insurance? Come on, don't be shy. 175? 180? Alright, let's let's do this. We're gonna go low end. We're gonna 150. How's that sound? One less low end. 150. So that's gonna take you 1185, right? You need gas for that vehicle. How much a month do you think you're going to spend on gas? You need to get a moped if you're spending $400 on a car. Switch to a four-cylinder girl. The fossil fuels are going out. The oil in Texas, they appreciate you. Um, you have, woo, moped. Uh, let's just, man, let's go with, let's just say $100. That's $25 a week, right? Lowest gas is right now. You should get it, be able to get a half tank of gas for $25. So $100 is going to drop you uh, down to $1,085. <coughs> you have a $8,000. You got a little What's that? Ain't got no food yet, have you? Let's talk. But you know, fat people, well, I'm not going to forget food. I, I will forget a lot of things. Food ain't going to be one of them. I will go without shoes. I'll have. I, 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 I mean, I, I have a pair of Crocs, literally, that you can ask anybody. I wear, I have like six pair of them. Number one, fat people don't like bending over tying shoes. That's the first thing. But they like don't ever wear out. <laughs> you just keep wearing them. So let's talk about food. Subway, right down the road, has a lunch meal for like $6, right? So 
what is a good, I mean, my budget's like 2000 a month for food, because I'm home. So, we broke. That's why my wife is working, <laughs> to pay my lunch bill. No, uh, so about how much per month do you think? 500. 500? Five, $125 a week? Now, hold on now. You got to get groceries. You got to get your shampoo. Praise God, you done got you some deodorant. Some, some foot wash, some pantyhose, some toilet paper, some, you know, hairspray. My wife's Pentecostal. I don't do makeup, jewelry, but it's the hairspray and toilet paper. We trump all of that. So, what, so 500? That's just food. And necessities. What about five? Let, let's let's stick with what I say 175 a week. That'd be 700 a month to get us our cleaning supplies, pantyhose, toilet paper for these ladies. Help me, Moses, toilet paper. I swear they talk about trees. If the if women would learn how to use less than one roll every time they go to the bathroom, it would be a lot of, I mean, I'm just saying from experience. I'm just saying, $175 a week is going to be $700 a month. So let's put that down, $700. That's for food. That's for food, groceries, everything, $700. Let's just drop us down. Oh, we're going to get there. How many have a cell phone? We're not talking about Verizon or Sprint, cut it in half or anything. We're going straight, straight talk, right? We're all about straight talk. $50 a month. $50 a month, right? Unlimited data, $50 a month. What's that dropping down to the cell phone $50? 50 for the Yes, ma'am, 50 for the cell phone. I'm at 205 How many people married, Dayton? Y'all single back there? Y'all need to come talk to these folks up here about what I'm joking. So you got if you go on a date, if you if you don't take your wife or your husband out at least once a, a, a month, you in trouble. You better have a good couch, okay? So if you take them to the movies and then you take your wife out to eat at anywhere besides Whataburger and Sonic, you're gonna spend a cool hundred on that date night, right? So let's say a hundred dollars for our date night for 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 our honey date night with a honey for per month. I'm just gonna take it one time. Now look, she'd be lucky to get that one time. You know, I got three boys, so. Uh, <laughs> but she is married to me, so I have to kind of keep her in check just for a little, you know, try to draw her back in. All right, so where are we at now? Y'all tell me. $105. Woo! Hold on, we ain't even talking about any health insurance. We're not talking about any savings. We're not talking about any 401k. We ain't talking about giving lunch money to your kids. Not talking about any of that. We had 105. Where do we start out at? 42.5, right? And we're down to 105 just living. So I told you before that when I came to Kilgore College, I had $18,000 in debt, right? I graduated with a year and a half. Yes, ma'am. See, that ain't including daycare. I don't have, my kids are older. If they can't watch themselves, they just in trouble. I'm just, I'm just saying. So yeah, daycare, I don't think about daycare. You would, because you got a little munchkin. You know what I'm saying? Two little munchkins. All right, so here's the deal. Remember, I told you that I, I left Kilgore College with $18,000. I graduated a year and a half at Kilgore College. Most students take two, two and a half, three years. The average debt is anywhere from thirty to forty thousand dollars that people take from Kilgore College. Anybody want to guess what a payment on thirty thousand dollars to the government is? Looks to me like they got a hundred dollars to give. Hold on one second, but that ain't what it is. It's three hundred and twelve dollars per month. For ten years. What's that number add up to there, Miss Nett? We're doing minus three twelve. Minus three twelve. We're in the negative, right? Forty thousand dollars worth of debt is going to give you a payment of about four hundred sixteen dollars a month. Now, here's what I don't want you to do. I, I'm going to try to hurry up because it took a little longer on that. But you need to understand there are only two debt forgiveness plans out there. For nursing, individual hospitals do offer things, but through the federal government, there are only two debt forgiveness programs. Do not believe that Obama and the rest of the Congress is going to come pay your loans off because that is not going to happen. It's just not going to. There are two. Number one, 
You can be a teacher. If you're a teacher in a low income uh, school, teaching English, math, or science, you get $17,500 off your loans. My wife's a, a first grade teacher at Pine Tree. She graduated, has her master's both from Laterno. She owes $67,000 in student loan. That's why I gotta take her out to eat once a month. So between my wife and I, we're at about $85,000 in student loan debt that we're gonna have to pay back. Remember I told you there was two. So if she, got, if she taught math and science, she gets $17,000. That's still gonna leave her with $50,000 worth of student loan. She has her master's degree. Now, the second thing is you can be a public service worker, meaning you can work at a college or for a city or a municipality or, or county. And if you make 10 years of payments on time, then they're going to pay off the rest of it. What did I just tell you that the time frame for paying off that 312 was? How many years? Yeah. So what are they going to pay off? 36 cents? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. Hey, I'm going to let you borrow $30,000, and once you paid it all back, I'm going to pay the rest of it off. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The other thing with those, just those two I want you to understand is they're going to get their money any way possible. I had a phone call, a young girl starts yelling at me and says, hey Will, or hey, y'all took my money. I didn't take your money. If I did, I'm going to eat on it, but I didn't take it. <laughs> and she said, four years ago, I went to Kilgore College and I got some student loans and I dropped out of school. And so the other day I went to get my tax refund check and they had taken it off. Because they're going to get it. Anybody remember the national story of a lady in Chicago? She had gone back to school, got her degree, but now she was on SSI retirement or whatever it is that they, they get, you know, your little Medicaid, Medicare, all that stuff there at the end. And uh, she got her first check and it was $12 <laughs> for the month. And she was trying to sue somebody. And you know what it was? She went to fault on her loans and they took her retirement away from her. Your parents pass away, leave you some money, your uncle, whatever, they gonna get their money first before you get yours. They're gonna garnish your wages, they're gonna ruin your credit, they're going to get their money. Do not ignore the little pieces of paper that come in the mail if you borrow loans, do not ignore it. If it says Sally Mae, Navient, whatever it is, you need to, oh, don't throw it with the rest of the Good Shepherd and Trinity and all them other medical bills. <laughs> that you like, oh, I'm going to forget about it. No, it's not going anywhere. So you need to make sure that you don't ignore those. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 So what Ms. Morgan was just saying was, Kilgore College is so inexpensive for a lot of us that you don't have to get the loans. And, and I was going into my next point of the Pell Grant, you are limited. Pell Grant's money you don't have to pay back. You're limited to the amount of Pell Grant that you can get. It's about 12 semesters that you can get, 600%. Um, so if you go to school here for two and a half, three years, and you take two or three times, you take a class two or three times, you're wasting that Pell Grant availability. And when you get to a four year school, I transferred from here to well, I was at SFA, but now I'm at Texas A&M Commerce. When I took an online class here, it was $50 for a lab fee. My online lab fees at Texas A&M Commerce are $250 per class that I take. So five times more for that. When I went to SFA for one semester, my tuition and everything was about three times more than what I had here at Kilgore College. I said all that to say, Remember, you're limited with your Pell Grant, but you're also limited to the amount of loans that you can borrow. So unless you want to start paying for your four-year school out of pocket, you need to start beginning your college career or wrapping up your college career here at Kilgore with an end in mind. What is your ultimate goal? What is it going to cost me to get there? What, what do I need to save up? Let's talk about your finance. Remember, we want to give you a tool to not just be academically successful, but we don't want you, we want you to be financially successful when you leave Kilgore College as well. There's a little card that you got, and uh, on there, there are three websites. The first website is nslds.gov. Dot ed. Dot ed.gov, sorry. Ours is no ed there. The first website works like a bank account. It works like um, you can go in, sign into that. You can tell how much your loan debt is. You can tell how, who you need to pay it to, what your percentage rate is. 
all of those things. So you can start planning, like Ms. Morgan said, maybe not borrow the full $10,500 to be able to buy a big screen television and go to school here, right? Maybe you want to save some of that for the four-year university so you can get your degree and maybe move on to being a master's. You can also look at Pell on there too. You can also look at your Pell Grant usage on there also. The second website is studentloans.gov. On that studentloans.gov, what happens is uh, when you borrow money through through the government, you had to do entrance loan counseling and master promissory notes. You, you did those there. But when you leave Kilgore College, even if it's just from withdrawing, when you leave, you have to do exit loan counseling as well. Okay, so that's the website there. And then our SAP policy. Remember the SAP policy I was talking about? The pothole in the Grand Canyon and all that good stuff? The 2.0, passing the hours, it's on that other little website uh, on that card as well. So you want to make sure that you take a look at those three websites. Now, Ms. Morgan's going to come and she's going to talk to you a little bit about scholarships because they have just a little bit uh, different criteria. Um, but if you have a question about scholarships, how to apply, all of those things, you can always check out our website. Or you can go see Beverly Davis upstairs in the financial aid office. She's she kind of over that. If you have a question about your student loans that you don't understand on nslds.ed.gov, if you don't understand that, that, that first link on the card, you can always go talk to Rebecca Metcalf. She is our student loan coordinator, so you can go talk to her. Um, if you have questions about your red alerts, warning, suspensions, any of that kind of stuff, come talk to me and see if I can help you figure out what we can do to get, get going in the right direction as opposed to where we are uh, now. So This is going to be very brief because I know y'all appreciate your coming. If you have scholarships, be aware that those scholarships carry different regulations. You, you don't want to wind up losing your scholarship because you didn't know how many hours you were supposed to complete. Most scholarships require completion of 12 hours with a 2.5 GPA. That's different from grants and loans. So scholarships are it's something you don't want to lose. That's free money that somebody gave you or Kilgore College gave you. Before you drop a class, go upstairs and talk to Beverly Davis and she'll find your uh, letter of agreement and tell you how many hours you need to complete for your scholarship to co keep continuing to receive those scholarship funds on your, on your account for the next semester. If you want to renew the scholarship, do a renewal scholarship application. It's online, you don't have to furnish letters of recommendation, but she does need that by April 1st is the deadline. The whole point of getting you here for this seminar is we want you all to graduate or transfer. We don't want you to withdraw and we don't want you to end up on suspension. We want you to be whatever it is that you want to be, whether it's an engineer, a lawyer, a nurse, a chef in a restaurant, a welder, fixing cars, that's fine. Just do it. Complete it. And leave Kilgore College debt free. Don't take, don't be fooled by or lured into the, the debt uh, riddle that you leave here with a load of debt and you're not aware of it. We want you to have all the tools that you need to be successful so you can complete Kilgore College. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate you coming.